Hi everyone, let's go over my medium time frame, low time frame and micro bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the medium time frame bullish scenario where we're still looking for a continuation to the upside in either a wave 3 or a wave C after the low of wave 2 or B is in. Now on the micro, still looking for a move towards the downside and I think the 3A2 is a very interesting level for potentially a bounce because we also have some additional support there sitting between 28.8k and 29 0.1k and also the 0 0.5 has some nice support between 27.8k and 28.2k. If we then look towards the upside for the targets of a wave C or 3, then the wave C most common target area is pulled from the low to the high of A to the low potential low of wave B around the 3A2, where then the most common target for C is between 35.5k and 37k. For a wave 3, you really want to see that 1.618 being hit, especially on this particular time frame with the 1.618 sitting at about 39.5k to 40k. And also a wave 3 tends to be a lot more impulsive and parabolic, while a wave C tends to be more of a lazy structure to the upside. So that is how we can determine if we're going to have a wave 3 or a wave C to the upside in this bullish scenario. In the bearish scenario, we still expect a move to the downside in then a WXY, where inside wave Y, the common target area is between the 1 and the 1.236, taken from the high to the low of W to the high of X, which is between 26.2K and 24.9K. The thing is that this target area over here has been reached already once before so for me it doesn't make too much sense to go down here and bounce from this area because price has already taken the liquidity here and bounced on the support area so that's a bit odd and if we look at a wave Y, then the most common uh, patterns in a wave Y are a zigzag, flat, and a triangle. A zigzag is a 535. A flat, most commonly, is an ABC expanding flat. And then, of course, we have a triangle. But at the moment, price is ranging. It doesn't show any signs of a zigzag, doesn't show any signs of potentially a flat over here, at least going deep enough for a flat. And also, it doesn't really show signs of a triangle. So at the moment, this scenario has a lower probability. If we then go to the low time frame and we have a look at the bearish scenario that we've been looking for for a while now, we're looking here for a WXY, which is a 3-3 three, three, and then another 3-wave structure to the downside, where then the most common target area for wave Y is between the 1 and the 1.236, taken from the high to the low of W to the high of wave X, sitting between 29.4K and 28.9K. And that's interesting because here we have that target box again, which is also positioned around around the medium time frame 3A2 between 28.8K and 29.1K. So this is a very interesting support for then potentially a move to the upside. Of course, that depends on how price is going to move to the downside. If we see volume increasing to the downside with very big candles, then this might be a potential wave three or at least deeper structures can be expected. Lower prices can be expected where we then have this support as mentioned earlier with the 0 0.5 being in here as well. So it's all about how is price approaching this wave Y area, but it is an interesting area nonetheless. In the bullish scenario, we expect a move to the upside and this is then to be a wave one followed by a two and this is then the beginning of a bigger wave three to the upside but with this scenario there's a couple of things i at least want to say so first of all this wave one looks very much like a three wave structure now that's not the problem per se because you can always have a diagonal which can then be a three 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 and then another three wave structure in a one two three four five so all the waves are then three wave structures the problem is that you can't really have a contracting diagonal because of the price action especially because this wave two is so incredibly long what you're gonna then get is a like yeah something like this maybe but it doesn't look good at the moment as it stands this wave two is also very long as mentioned which you know yes there's the rule of alternation where if two is shallow and long then wave uh, four tends to be deep and uh, short but this is also very reminiscent of a wave b or a wave x a long sideways structure for then a move to the upside and when we talk about deep actually this wave two with the fib taken from the low to the high of one putting it then on wave two targets, it did hit 
the golden pocket which is the most common target area for a wave 2 so yeah it is long in time and it is deep as this is considered a deep target for a wave 2 so yeah I don't know this impulsive uh, move at the moment or this impulsive scenario is not favorable as it stands and if we then go to the micro this was very interesting right last night at least for me in the central east european time zone we got this push to the upside looking for that wxy where the target area this is the one i mentioned for a while right which is sitting between 35.5k and 30 or 30.5k and 30.7k for potential resistance it moved beyond this part over here and then i said to, uh, to the group i said well we have the final boss which is basically the gap and a one hour order block which is positioned over here and we got a bit of a reaction there so we have to wait if price can actually continue because also in the video of yesterday i mentioned that the bullish scenario currently does not have my highest probability now price over here close the gap hit the uh, the candle over here basically the order block or closing the gap very nicely for then a, yeah, like a quick move to the downside over here and what's actually interesting is that this move over here closed right inside the most common target area for a wave y pulled from the low to the high of w to the low of x on the one hour time frame uh, where you can see a wick above but the candles closing below the 1.236 which is very very nice indeed and then after this one would expect a move to the downside then in that low time frame bearish scenario because we're then looking for a three-way structure to the downside around that 29k area if we look at the cvd divergences yes they finally played out right we were waiting for this for so long we had bullish divergences for so long the first one was over here that one played out eventually price came down and we kept forming bullish divergences with each low that was going to be made now the divergences played out and also the triple top has been taken we had one high two high three highs over here so that is very nice indeed for another successful bullish cvd divergence move to the upside where now the cvd divergences are pretty much neutralized if I go to the AGGR chart and zoom out, then first of all, you can see a higher low on price, lower low on the yellow and the uh, blue CVD, which is a bullish CVD divergence where the target is then this high. Now that one already played out. And if we look more locally, actually quite interesting, we have a little bit of an order block here between what is this 30.6k and 30.8k could be potential uh, resistance but if we look uh, more locally over here then I want to go to the five uh, minute we can see that there might be some potential bullish CVD divergences forming if price is going to move to the downside however because price moved impulsively to the downside I don't really prefer the bullish CVD divergences at the moment because they are such high risk after such a move to the downside so I mean that's of course you know stick to your plan your strategy and whatever you want to trade but bullish CVD divergences hmm you know because uh, of the move we had last night I do think it's interesting we have a bit of resistance over here so price could move up hit this area between then 30.6k and 30.8k for a move to the downside because in this scenario we don't want to see this high take and that's the invalidation of the bearish scenarios to the downside we also have news this week tomorrow 2 30 p.m central east european time and on thursday 2 30 p.m central east european time so make sure you trade safe around those hours because volatility might kick in and then uh, finally the probability section where on the medium time frame and my preferred scenario is the more bullish scenario where i'm looking for then a continuation to the upside in either a wave c or a wave three preferably still price moving to the downside a little bit more to hit at least a 3a2 that would be nice or potentially the 0 0.5 we wait and see how deep price then wants to go if it wants to go to the downside on a low time frame the bearish scenario for me is also preferred so looking for a move to the downside for wave Y, where then the validation, in my opinion, is taking this high over here. So we're looking for a three wave structure to the downside for wave Y with that support area around 29K. And on the bearish scenario, well, this one then looks finished in a three wave structure WXY for then also a move towards the downside. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use, in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye